All right, course two, we are in lesson 21. And uh, today we're gonna be looking at um, some, some things called prime numbers, and we're gonna look at something called a composite number. All right, so I want you to go to page 150, about halfway through where it says new concept. And the first thing uh, that it says there, we remember that counting numbers or natural numbers are numbers that we use to count. So they give us the example of one, two, three, all the way to 10, all right? And then it says, counting numbers greater than one are either prime or composite. So what does it mean to be a prime number? What is a prime number, okay? Greater than one. And you'll notice that anything that can only be divided by itself and, and only give one number. For instance, if you look at the factors of 1 through 10, the only thing that 1 can be divided by is itself, and that equals 1. 2 divided by 1 equals 2. So the factor of 1 and 2. Okay, 3 divided by itself is three. So we have the factors of three and one. Four can be divided by two, and four can be divided by one, which means this has more than one factor. So um, we have one, two, and four as our factors. There's one, there's two, and there's four. All of these are just three and one, two and one, one and one. So anything that just has only two numbers here are prime numbers. Anything that has more than two, like four and six and eight and 10, we would call composite numbers. It means that there is more, okay? So four is a composite number, three is a prime number because of just one and three. I think you understand that, so let's look at a couple of examples. Number one on page 151 says make a list of prime numbers that are less than 16. Okay, we know a couple of things. First of all, one and two are always prime, no matter what, because one divided by one and one divided by two. And really, we can say, I'm sorry, I should say one, two, and three. One, two, and three are always prime, okay? So, um, what else? All right, <clears throat> actually, we're gonna, uh, your textbook doesn't use one as prime um, because there, there aren't anything, you're not dividing it by anything. You can't divide one by one. I mean, you can, but it's one. So um, two, three, five, seven, um, 11, 13 uh, are all prime numbers, okay? Now, what about the composite numbers? It's all the numbers that we can't, um, that go in between here. So we saw that four, six, and then in here we have eight, nine, ten, right? Those numbers, because we can all divide those by different things, 11. We know that 12 is. We know that 14 and 15 are all part of that. So between one and 16, these are our composite, okay? Uh, and these are our prime numbers, okay? So we're looking for the difference between prime and composite. Okay, let's look at number two. It says list the factor pairs for these three numbers, and we have 16, and we have 17, and we have 18, all right? Let's kind of put those in a, a grouping, if you will. And, and we'll make the factors work. Okay, so we know that one times 16 is 16, okay? We know that two times eight is 16, and we know that four times four is 16. So all of these are multiples or factors of 16. So what are the factors? We would say the factors are one, two, 
4, 8, and 16. Those are our factors. Where did I come up with them? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. I don't have to put 4 twice because we've already listed it once and we know that. All right, what about 17? What are the factors of 17? Well, I know that 1 times 17 is 17. Is there anything else? No. So the factors of 17 are just 1 and 17. Uh, this is prime then. This is composite. All right. Um, what about 18? Well, we have 1 and 18. We have 2 and 9. Uh, and we have 3 and 6. Okay. So our factors then would be 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Again, this would be a composite number. All right, so we have two composites and one prime. That's how you do those problems, okay? If you turn the page, we're going to get into one more skill, and it's called prime factorization. I'm going to use example 4a um, to teach you how to do this, okay? The number 30. We want to break 30 down into the base units of what... Um, what makes it okay so because 30 is even I'm gonna divide it by 2 so I make this little triangle I divide 30 by 2 and I get 15 okay I can divide 15 by 3 and get 5 which means that these right here are my prime factorizations okay so 30 is equal to 2 times 3 times 5. Well, is that true? Can we can we redo this? Yeah, we can do it several ways. 3 times 5 is 15 times 2 equals 30. Or we could say 2 times 3, which is 6, times 5 equals 30. Regardless, prime factorization is 2 times 3 times 5. Okay? Um, if I want to do <clears throat> one that's larger, okay, on C, 420. Let's do that one, okay? All of these are even, so I can divide it by 2. And when I do that, it's 210, right? Let's divide this one because of because of it being um, in this um, in this regard, 210 divided by 2. So if I put 2 down here, it's 105. Okay, um, because we have 10 there and we have 5 there and we get 10, right? Okay, so we have 105. Because this is ends in 5, let's divide this by 5. 5 goes into 10 two times and into 5 once, all right? 21 can be divided by 3 and we get 7. We can't break those two numbers down any further. So to put it in order... We have two twos, so we're going to say 2 times 2, okay, takes care of those two. We have a 3 times 3, okay, and then we have a 5, and then a 7 times 5 times 7. So the factorization of 420 equals this number, or those numbers multiplied. So you're going to be asked to do that several times in this chapter as well, okay? So one more thing, you go to example 6. And it says, do the prime factorization of 36 and 60. And then we're going to find the greatest common factor. And I'll teach you what that is. All right, let's go to 36 first. We can divide 36 by 3 really easily and get 12. We can divide that by 3 and get 4. We can divide that by 2 and get 2. So here's our factorization. We've got two twos. So 2 times 2, and we got three threes times 3 times 3, okay? All right, let's go to uh, 60, all right? Let's do 60 here, okay? 60 divided by 2 is 30, divided by 2 is 15, divided by 3 is 5. So let's write these in, 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, okay? Now, to do this, the greatest common factor, G, C, F. I want to notice that these two parallels, those two match, 
these two match, these two match. Oh, these ones don't match. So what's the greatest common factor? Well, it's going to be these three numbers multiplied together because they're the same in both up to this point, right? So what's 2 times 2 times 3? Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So both of those have a greatest common factor of 12. Does that make sense? So GCF equals 12 for those two numbers. That's what you're after. Don't worry about these two numbers. They do mean something, but not with the greatest common factor. These are just left over. Here's something else to think about. When the greatest common factor, uh, when you do this, you can find out what this, this fraction equals reduced because the reduced fraction are the two numbers that are left over, which is 3 over 5. You can do reduction with that um, skill. All right, so that's your lesson today. Hopefully you do well, and if you have questions, you can ask.